Yeah, welcome, welcome everyone. So this is an open cell journey. It was an. <laughs> uh, so we are with Tomas representing the Open SSL Foundation and Open SSL Services Company, which I will talk in a few. We will start with the government governance, a bit of community, and we will finish with the technical <coughs> technical updates. So let's go uh, about the Open SSL. Open SSL is a cryptographic toolkit, which I think all of you knowingly or unknowingly using, so directly or indirectly. Uh, so we will be happy to answer any questions you may have. We will be specifically happy to find the people around who are using as a developer OpenSSL toolkit. So this is basically what it will be uh, about. And let's go. Yeah, what is OpenSSL? So it is a robust commercial grade full feature toolkit which is available to everyone. It is an open source. There is a lot of companies around the world using it for doing big business, small business, and uh, etc. We are also, uh, it's you know, a 25 years old library, so there is a, quite an experience behind. And uh, a lot of companies like to relies, relies on us in, a, in their work with governments. We also provide a shortcuts to get a governmental certification for the crypto algorithms or any cryptographic needs the company may have. Yeah, so this is what I already mentioned. This is what we represent. Open SSL Software Foundation is an entity which is non-profit entity which represent project in the legal capacities and basically take care about the trademarks, copyrights, managing donations which were coming to our project. And OpenSSL Software Services is everything commercial. It's a for-profit organization. This is basically the organization which pays us with so much to do the work for organization. It's also the entity which is used to sign contracts with the uh, customers and uh, paid support. And it is also a vendor of record for the NIST for the compliance FIPS certification. Uh, speaking of government governance, so we have we are we basically a small small organization, and uh, I wonder how <laughs> what people think how big we are, but we are just eight people like eight eight uh, it's six engineers right yeah yeah, yeah six engineers plus me who are, I'm doing the management work, and we have a lady who uh, taking care of the business operations. So speaking of the. Uh, governance, so some of these people who are paid resources by the OpenSSL represents the OpenSSL Management Committee, uh, which is a small group of people who has a decision on a uh, management, it's exactly, management strategic, de strategic decisions, everything which about business, financial, governmental decisions, and uh, basically maintains the project resources. Uh, the OTC, which is much more interesting, this uh, technical committee represents by, uh, represented by also like paid resources of the open SSL, but also we're working hard to get on board more people representing communities, representing customers, representing the world, let's say. And uh, we have quite, a, I don't know, straightforward process to get to the OTC, uh, it's, and we're looking looking for a people who are working with OpenSSL so that they can potentially uh, join the technical committee. It is very important for us to extend our community outreach and uh, have a good representation of the OpenSSL developers and users outside of our small group of uh, engineers who are working in OpenSSL on a project. OpenSSL Technical Committee uh, is the technical voice of the project, maintains the engineering processes, doing the technical decisions, uh, decides on the roadmap, and, uh, and et cetera. Working Group is a new entity which was created recently where we tried to put together OMC and OTC resources together, but it is limited to the people who are working in a 
working for OpenSSL directly, I think mostly. We, 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 think, I, we have invited an OTC member who never joined, <laughs> but we may think, to, <coughs> may, may think of extending it. Uh, but yeah, working group is assembled together every week where we have all the uh, problems, where we basically tackle the problems, tackle the difficult problems, where we have a discussion what is the best way to out do the community outreach, where we should go, who we should talk, how we should do some presentation, and et cetera. And uh, this is where we come into another interesting point. Uh, <clears throat> earlier this year, we decided to come up with a mission and mission statement and values for the project. It, they, I won't be reading it, have your time to read it. Uh, so the idea was to actually understand what, what, like, who are we, what are we doing, uh, so that we have a good guidance on uh, our decisions. Uh, it turned out as a very important milestone for us to actually know how we want to uh, develop in the future, what we want to accept to the project, who we want to accept to the project, how we want to work with the communities, how we need to rework the, uh, how we want to re rework the policies we have, how to make them more open. And every decision, every discussion we have nowadays, we're trying to, uh, to see through this prism of these values. We shared this statement and values with the wider community. We've got a very good feedback. And this week, we adapted it. So we actually, from now on, we're living with this uh, <laughs> statement and values. And I hope uh, it will serve well. So this is what I uh, partly uh, mentioned. So yeah, so we try and as a project do much better as we, than we did in the past by reaching out to the communities, talk, showing our roadmap, uh, having in a, talking about the, uh, the priorities about the project. We want to hear back from pretty much everyone. We are working hard right now to make our public, uh, our roadmap public which will happen this year. You're very welcome to, uh, to follow the OpenSSL on LinkedIn. We'll open SSL in our blog on OpenSSL.org. So we're gonna have more and more updates in there as soon as we reach a certain milestones about our openness. Uh, part of the things we are changing is the way we do in the release. Uh, the interesting thing is picture is not exactly final. It's under the discussion. What is important from this picture, we're going to do releases frequently. We switch to the time-based release schedule. We would like to release every April and October, which is good. It will be much longer list than 25 years here. Uh, <clears throat> uh, yeah, and uh, so an idea is that uh, the time will prevail over the feature sets. We obviously gonna be, uh, gonna have a discussions what we would like to have in upcoming releases. Uh, but it, like not everything may, may make it to the release, but we will see how it will go. We are going to start working on the release definition phase. This is where we will be defining what we would like to have an upcoming release. Uh, we're gonna have a discussions, I think, somewhere in the middle of the phase, maybe towards the end of the phase, we will certainly uh, share our plans on a website and every uh, social and media resource we can uh, touch. So yeah, we're really, really looking forward for anyone who is working in any capacity in OpenSSL to actually give us a feedback. And this is you? Um, so now this is the more technical part of the of the talk. Um, uh, let's start with um, uh, what was in OpenSSL 3.1. Uh, that release was done in um, or released in um, uh, middle of March, and uh, there were it was very small release because um, we were already working for a long time on on the quick support. Uh, but um, 
Uh, then we decided we need, we need one more release uh, in between to basically sub, uh, support uh, the FIPS 140-3. And um, so that was added there. Uh, and uh, it was also decided that uh, we should have something more. And we decided that uh, yeah, performance problems with 3.0 release uh, uh, could be improved, but uh, some of the changes were quite invasive, so uh, we decided to not have it as a kind of bug fix for the 3.0, but uh, do it in the form of the 3.1 release. Um, yeah, those, uh, basically, all the pluggability and, and flexibility that was added uh, to 3.0 release, like uh, the uh, added uh, support of the library context, where, which you can use to like select um, or, or complete, almost completely isolate uh, different uh, users of OpenSSL within a single process. Um, um, that's that comes at some cost, uh, especially with multi-threading. You have to have some quite um, um, big. Uh, or quite um, pervasive locking there and, and so on. So um, all this, um, uh, and, and it was also designed from start with some uh, maybe not, not that good decisions on, on this, on this uh, um, flexibility. So uh, there was um, uh, one big change which was done by Hugo, who is over there. <laughs> In, in the audience, uh, which uh, basically made the uh, li library context uh, much less um, um, like uh, fight, fighting over over locks and so on. So um, uh, that that was one one of the big invasive change in in three point one. Um, yeah, on, on the on the performance improvement side, there is still a lot of. Uh, lot to improve, but um, um, yeah, we are getting better and um, hopefully in future versions it, it will be uh, even better. In some cases, it's all, uh, already in the master branch. Uh, there are uh, some, some changes that make some jobs done with uh, OpenSSL even faster than 111, but, but yeah, these are mostly <laughs> exceptions, but yeah. Um, oops. Um, so, um, oh, I don't know. Oh, yeah. Um, so, 3.1 is released. Uh, the FIPS 140 3 is in, in validation. Um, of course, because it's FIPS 140 3, um, it's a new standard many new new things in there. Uh, it's m very likely that, that uh, before we get uh, uh, 3.1 validated, um, officially validated by NIST, uh, it will take like one year since the submission. So it's, it's more like um, sometime next year when we will get the, the 3.1 validated. Uh, now about the 3.2 release. Uh, as, you, as some of you probably know, uh, the main focus on, on 3.2 was uh, adding uh, quick support. And that's, that's quite a huge thing, uh, of course. But now we are in late stages of uh, development of it. Uh, basically, the implementation is almost uh, feature complete uh, in terms of like quick client. Uh, it's not, it's, uh, the server is not, not um, was not targeted for 3.2. Um, and uh, yeah, the, the, like what we think is the biggest uh, like uh, advantage or, or good thing for our users uh, is that the API of, of, uh, that, that you can use for uh, Quick uh, will be very like uh, naturally uh, extending the existing API. Uh, as I already said something about that, there are further performance optimizations in 3.2, and there are a lot of other small features, some, some of them not, 
not, not that small even. <laughs> there are things like, um, what is there? Uh, com uh, certificate compression, uh, Argon2 support, uh, basically uh, uh, now implementations in OpenSSL can, can uh, um, like, Internal code of OpenSSL can can use uh, multiple threads. Uh, it can spawn uh, spawn threads, and application can limit the number of threads uh, OpenSSL with, will spawn uh, by itself. Uh, that was, for example, required not only for Argon2 but also for Quick uh, implementation for some of the features of the, of the Quick implementation. It's not not mandatory, but uh, um, Especially like um, some some of the um, users of of uh, Quick in OpenSSL can can take advantage of it. Um, uh, about the Quick API, basically uh, this um, um, this Quick API is nothing nothing completely new. It's it's uh, building up uh, up on the SSL uh, API that, that's already there. Uh, you can use, um, basically it's, it's, it should be very simple to write uh, blocking uh, quick client and access quick streams uh, from multi multiple threads simultaneously. Uh, and these are uh, like um, uh, the access to the internals is properly locked and so on so you you will you will be able to <coughs> uh, for example uh, read from one stream from one st one thread and uh, uh, write to another stream from another thread and that should all work nicely mm. uh, you will use uh, the familiar calls like SSL new SSL connect uh, to connect the quick connection write to uh, streams, uh, read from streams by SSL read, uh, shut down to uh, close the connection, and so on. Um, but of course, there is new AP, uh, there, there, there are some new APIs which are needed for having um, uh, uh, multi, multi, multiple stream support in Quick. Uh, so you create a new stream that's um, um, uh, initiated by by uh, the local side by uh, using SSL new stream, and uh, you accept streams from from the peer by SSL ac accept stream, and the SSL stream conclude is uh, to uh, indicate the um, end of stream, and that's basically it. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, <clears throat> maybe like before we open for questions, uh, it's also the important thing that we are as a company, we would like to grow, we have a lot of ahead of us. If you are working with OpenSSL, you have questions, you're welcome. If you would like to explore an options, what we can offer in a company, we'll be happy to talk to everyone. And... <laughs> uh, yeah, any questions? And also, most important, like we have, or I have, this is a full of t-shirts. <laughs> to motivate you to ask questions, I think that we, we should be able to provide a uh, t-shirt to everyone who asks a question. If we don't have enough time here for the Q&A, find us outside and we are available for any question. So, I don't know. Uh, uh, sorry about that. I did not explain that. <laughs> uh, so, uh, Quick is a new uh, new protocol um, which basically replaces uh, TCP plus TLS. Uh, with it's it's uh, it's uh, in some cases it's faster, uh, but it especially it provides uh, um, like. Um, uh, those multiple streams which don't block each other, so it's it's like uh, you can you can avoid some um, uh, head of so-called head of line blocking. Uh, so so basically, if if the application uh, typical usage is um, web, 
where you have like multiple uh, streams of data which is flowing to you from the server, uh, like uh, pictures, uh, scripts, whatever. And, and you, you, you basically get uh, all those independent streams of data like independently. Like you can, you can transfer them independently and uh, um, uh, if, if some packets are lost, which contain some of those streams and not all of them, then, then you, you, ba you basically can like continue downloading the others and then only after the, the packet is retransmitted and you get some of the blocked uh, data, but yeah, it's, it's not like everything is blocked. And I guess if you look into the security tree, If you touch our HTTP three, so it's <coughs> three. <laughs> yeah. You could possibly touch Quick as well. Yeah. Basically, uh, Quick is the um, uh, HT. Uh, it's it's the uh, connection or, or the connection layer layer by behind HTTP three. Yeah, okay. Yeah. But but quick is like general. It's not it's not uh, directly or by by uh, or directly linked to HTTP three. Yeah. Uh, there, yeah, there, there is a CI basically, which is, yeah, uh, yeah. So how is testing uh, done in OpenSSL and uh, OpenSSL releases? Um, uh, yeah, we have CI, which, which is mostly on on GitHub. Uh, that's the GitHub CI, and uh, we have also some internal CI, which is BuildBot CI, uh, based on BuildBot. Uh, which is basically nothing special, but yeah, we are we are building on a uh, lot of uh, operating systems uh, with, within the build bot and a lot of other, because there are so many options uh, how you can build and, and configure OpenSSL. Um, it, it's um, like there are hundreds of jobs that are running on GitHub. Um, yeah, he was, uh, yeah. You, you, yeah. Uh, Yeah, uh, so basically he's asking about uh, FIPS mode in OpenSSL, uh, what's the difference between 3.0, 3.1, 1.0, uh, FIPS, um, FIPS module, and so on. Um, so uh, the, op the FIPS mode, um, how to start? Uh, the, the difference between 3.0 and 3.1, 3 FIPS module, uh, um, I would not call it FIPS mode because FIPS mode is something that's more um, like Fedora Red Hat centric thing, uh, uh, but um, and and the one O module had actually the FIPS mode where where you switch the library into the FIPS mode, and that was basically meaning that you are calling the calling the um, uh, implementation from the FIPS module, uh, but um, uh, in in three dot O we added the the so called providers which is basically those algorithmic implementations which are isolated from the rest of the library. And uh, one of them is the FIPS, uh, FIPS validated implementation, yeah, which is in load loadable module. Uh, it's shared, shared library, shared, shared uh, module, which you can load. And uh, uh, if you call implementation, uh, if you call, on, if you, or if you set up the library to call algorithms only from this module, then you are basically in FIPS validated kind of mode, if you could say that, I guess. 
So, uh, and the difference between 3.0 and 3.1 is uh, uh, targeted uh, FIBS version. Uh, FIBS 140-2 uh, is like uh, the 3.0 version is, is targeting FIBS 140-2 uh, version of the standard and uh, uh, 3.1 tar targets, um, targets um, uh, the FIBS 140-3 version. That's a, that's a very long. <laughs> we can, we can, we can talk yeah, about it. we can talk about it later. Yeah. <laughs> we have five minutes. Um, um, yeah. So what is the legal status of this all the time? Since I did one point zero point two, and so now that there are some new issues behind the payroll, so it should take care of everything. Yeah, it's it's a good uh, good question. <laughs> what's the what's the legal status of of those old uh, uh, extended support releases? Um, yeah, we are doing uh, so-called extended support releases, which which contain new new like fixes for security issues or other critical issues that our customers, uh, premium customers, report to us. But um, uh, those are still open source. They, they are. It's it's very similar to what, for example, Red Hat does. Yeah, because it it, it does. Uh, he has paid support for open source software. But uh, the difference is, of course, that we don't release this, uh, this uh, code of these new patches to public. We, we give it only to customers. And we ask them to not share it yeah, with others, like publicly. The customers cannot share it. They can. Uh, they, they, are not, they are not bound by license to, to, to not share it. But they are not bound by the contract, but we are asking them to not do it. And we can, of course, terminate the contract if they do it. So they won't get the future ones if, if they share the patches. Um, here's a file. Uh. Uh, I do have a question, but a comment that you know, I'm, uh, we are very happy about the new security patches. Uh, it improves with our blue and Yeah, yeah. New new security process of OpenSSL. Uh, I think it's yeah, it's 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 actually not that new. It's it's like we are we are. Yeah. Uh, what what uh, was thinking for new yeah, security less process? Of a, less of a question, more of a thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> um, yeah, choose one. <laughs> okay, we have uh, one question from Hendrik. Okay. Uh, what kind of safety devils and practices do you do for employees? Uh, do you do SAFD bugging? Uh, what practices give you better results? Uh, what what uh, uh, if I could repeat the question? What what are we doing as security practices for for each release development for development practice? Um, yeah, we what is the security? Uh, we we use we use uh, uh, static analyzers. We use coverity. Uh, we um, we use fuzzing. We are uh, tested uh, regularly uh, under the OSS fuzz um, uh, CI. Um, what do we more? Um, yeah, we have we have some we have some code uh, coding guide how 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 you properly do coding for OpenSSL uh, source code and um, uh, yeah we have CIs yeah uh, yeah we use we use um, those um, um, ASAN TSAN. Um, uh, memory sanitizer in in uh, in the CI jobs, so yeah, it's um, um, I I cannot tell which which of those practices is most most like uh, important for us, but yeah, well, it and a lot, of and also yeah. a lot of new teams and uh, companies trying to reach out and say, hey, let's do more coverage, let's do this fuzzing with other tool. And it's kind of like, kind of a problem for us to look into everything and uh, understand if it's useful, if it's not useful. But in general, the perception is that we doing just all right at this point. Yeah, 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 of course, of course. Yeah, as I said, that uh, it's uh, we are doing uh, uh, pr like uh, we have pretty strict code review process uh, when we are accepting patches. That's also very important. Uh, how much time do we have? Um, no. Um, 
Um, that's mostly about the future plans. Uh, yeah, question was uh, when, when the server side quick support will, will land in OpenSSL. So I'm like, it's not finalized, yeah. We probably would like to have it in 3.03. Not sure if, if, if it's realistic or not, but uh, hopefully. <laughs> At, at, at the latest 3.4. <laughs> yeah, sorry, so this is a question for Thomas, I guess. Um, you mentioned that you want to be more open with uh, your, your government processes. Uh, and so far, I think there are no public records of local C sharp conversions. Uh, I'm planning to introduce those. Uh, so It's definitely, uh, so the, <clears throat> the intention in a, for the future to do the most, actually everything we can do in public, to make it public. Uh, so the problem for this moment is that the tools we are using, the migration from one tool to another tool to actually manage the, uh, the roadmap, uh, it's a question how much we would like to share being an OTC community. Uh, I, I feel like there is nothing to keep in secret with a few exceptions of the embargoed uh, security fixes we do. But uh, to answer your question, we are not doing right now almost nothing to be really open. And we're doing a lot right now to change it. And, I, it, and, if, and if you're failing, reach out to me and tell me that you're failing. Eh? <laughs> I can add something more. Uh, like uh, the, the OTC uh, meeting minutes is public. It's in repo on GitHub. Maybe nobody knows where to get it, but it's there. <laughs> yeah, so it's, it's like, uh, yeah. Uh, and of course the meeting minutes, it's just the most important things from the meeting, yeah? It's not like everything that everybody say, uh, said, yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, yes, basically, the, uh, yeah, if, if it's possible to integrate the quick uh, API into event loops like uh, EPO. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, basically the, the API, uh, like Hugo would be maybe better <laughs> to answer it, but, but then you can talk with him. Uh, but yeah, it's possible. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's a very open question. I would like, we can have a discussion outside, but it's like something we can, yeah. Last question, okay. Uh, no, repeat the question. Yeah, the question was about like a more generic question, how the testing in a soft, like in a such a complex project like an open SSL or the project which, is in, which integrates open SSL do the, uh, do the testing so that nothing escapes. I don't know, that's, I mean, we can talk about theory a lot. Uh, another question. Does the project have access to policy? We do have. Yeah. Yeah, nice to meet you, by the way. <laughs> like, the problem is that it's impossible for us to do application testing, basically. Yeah, because there are so many applications. So we depend on uh, that's the, and that's basically every open open source software has this problem, which is like used used widely, uh, and so we depend on users to actually try it test it before the release, before the final release, and report bugs. Yeah, if they don't do that, I don't think we have a chance to like, uh, yeah, that, and, and OpenSSL has extremely huge API, like the, the legacy APIs is, the surface is so, so big that uh, it, it's impossible to like really envision what can be the problems in, the new, in new releases. Yeah. It, it, it was mostly, like the 3.0 release was like, most most problematic in this regard. The three dot two, yeah. If we have some bug in Quick, we will fix it. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, it's it's new thing, but the three dot oh, which was most the refactoring, that was problem. Yeah. Thank you everyone for coming.